Today we're going to explore the best AI art generation tools for print on demand. That's coming up. Hey, what's up everybody and welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much for watching today. Let's dive in. If you're not familiar with AI, let's start off by just talking a little bit about what's happening with AI and how you can use it. So AI obviously stands for artificial intelligence and there are new tools coming out on the internet, new softwares and new tools that you can use that utilize the power of AI to accomplish different things. The most popular AI tool is called ChatGPT, and you can go on and you can basically just talk to it and ask it anything, ask it for inspiration, ideas, ask it to tell you stories or write books for you. I mean, you can do uh, some crazy things with it, and it's been exploding in popularity. But one of the coolest ways that you can use AI that has just been exploding as well is through art generation. So actually typing in a text prompt and then getting out a piece of art. And there are many tools that have come out that you can use to do this. Some are better than others. And today I wanna to talk to you about three tools that you can use for print on demand specifically. And we'll break down kind of the ins and outs of these and how you can use them in your own business. Over the last month or so, as I've been exploring how AI can be used for print on demand, I have to be honest with you, my mind has been blown a little bit. And this video today is not sponsored by any of these tools or anything, so these are all just my personal opinions. But I went into this thinking that maybe AI wasn't at a point where it could really produce things that could be used to sell and make money, and I was completely wrong. Now don't get me wrong, some tools are better than others. There are definitely AI art generation tools that just aren't really on par yet, but I've been able to find some of them that are better than others, and you can absolutely use these art pieces for print on demand and so many other things but today I wanna to talk specifically about how you can use them on print on demand. One thing to note before I show you how these work is that from everything I've read and all the research I have done, these are 100% unique art pieces that can be used commercially. Uh, you can put them on products, you can sell them for profit. There is no like copyright trademark uh, that comes along with these images that you get generated from AI. Now that being said, you, all, you do want to be conscious of copyrights and trademarks that might be held by companies like Disney, for instance. You can't go to AI and put in a Disney character and then sell that piece of art with print on demand. That is going to be trademarked by the Disney company. But the AI generators are popping out unique artwork that you can use uh, in most cases. But obviously you still have to pay attention to trademarks that are held by uh, companies, right? That's, that's gonna be a little bit different. So don't go in just putting a picture of Mickey Mouse that you generated from AI on a t-shirt, right? You were trying to create these unique pieces of art, but they will respond to characters and movies and different things like that and celebrities you can put in there. So you have to be a little bit careful with that. But if you read into the terms and conditions, for the most part, everything can be used uh, freely to you. You can use it in any capacity that you want. The three AI art generation tools I want to show you today are Canva's text to image, Dolly 2 and Mid Journey. Let's start with Canva. And what I'm gonna do on all three of these AI art generators is I'm gonna basically put in the same prompt and I'm gonna try to get something that's usable for print on demand from this same prompt. Now, so far, Canva has been my least favorite of these three, but I wanted to show it because I know so many people already use Canva and this might be something you wanna play with. Now, another tip I'll give you is that the better you can get at learning these prompts and actually like putting in the right words, the better results you will get. But I have not been impressed with Canva's text to image generator. I really haven't been able to get anything out of it yet that I can use and I'm sure it will improve over time so give it some time. But the Canva one just isn't that great yet. And as we go through the three tools today, I'm gonna go in order of my least favorite to my most favorite and you're gonna see how different and how incredible uh, the top choice can be compared to something like Canva. So let's start out. Are you thinking about starting up a new Shopify print on demand store this year and you need to, a little additional help and guidance getting everything set up and figuring things out? If so, I wanna invite you to download my completely free Shopify cheat sheet over at shirtschool.com slash cheat sheet. It takes you through about 13 steps to build and open your store. And then I also provide you with helpful links to tools and apps that I love to use and that I think you will love as well. So go download it completely free at shirtschool.com slash cheat sheet. So let's start out with Canva. So this is what it looks like in the text 
to image area. I basically just got a canvas like you would normally have on Canva. I've just used the t-shirt canvas. Now over here, I can put in any prompt that I want. I just type in the text and it will generate an image for me. So what I'm gonna do on all three of these tools is I'm gonna try to get a picture of a cute dog reading a book and we're gonna see what it gives me. So I'm gonna type this in. Okay, so this is what we've got here. You see four pictures of dogs with books. Now, it actually did a pretty good job here. This is actually one of the better ones I've seen. But as we look at this, we might be saying, how would you use this for print on demand? This in itself really probably wouldn't be that useful for print on demand. All that it, that it didn't get right here was the white background. And the reason I like to put white background in there is to try to get something that we can easily remove the background and use it on a t-shirt or you know some kind of print on demand item. So we're gonna edit this a little bit and see what we get. What we oftentimes need to do is either pick one of these styles, maybe like a drawing uh, or you know a different style, a painting could work well, a, a pattern could work well, or we need to enter in some specific words to get the result that we want. Now, because I'm maybe putting this on a t-shirt, I probably want something that's a little more hand-drawn or cartoonish or something like that. So we're gonna try a few different things here with the same prompt and see if we can get a better result. So what I'm doing this time is I put in the same prompt, a cute dog reading a book on a white background, but this time I'm gonna do it as a drawing. We're gonna hit the generate image button and see what happens. Okay, so again, it's popped out four images. We're getting a little bit closer to what we need. You can see that these two here and even this one really have a white background and they're a little more cartoonish. We're gonna try one more time because this isn't really what I'm looking for. I'm trying to get kind of a cartoon drawing of a dog reading a book, maybe facing forward, maybe wearing glasses or that kind of thing. And so I'm not really getting exactly what I'm looking for here. So I'm gonna try a little bit more words. Just to try one last time to see if I can get closer to what I want. So this time what I'm putting in is a cute dog wearing glasses, reading a book on a white background. And I also use the words cartoon and sticker. And I wanna see how it responds. I'm going with drawing again because that got me a little bit closer. Let's hit the generate button and see what we get. Okay, so we got four more images. This was the closest that we've got. And and we're right on the line of getting something that we could use. It's not exactly what I'm looking for. The closest one would be this one right up here at the top right. This is really the only one that we can maybe use on a design, but you can see because it is AI, the legs are kind of like going through the book. So it's, it's kind of on that line. Now I will say what's cool about Canva is if you can get a workable image here that you can actually use in a design, you can just click it to pop it right into your, uh, to, your, to your actual design right here. You're already in your design software. So we could use this and we could actually remove our background right here in Canva. We could add the text, we could edit everything. So that's a huge advantage of doing Canva. But this picture right here, isn't really what I'm looking for and isn't really what I would put on a shirt. Now we could keep hitting the generate more button. We could keep kind of fiddling with this, adding more uh, text and we might be able to get a little bit closer, but let's go ahead and jump to our second choice, which is Dolly 2. So we can see how it handles this prompt. Okay, so we're over at Dolly 2 and when you sign up for Dolly 2, you get I believe 50 generations for free and then you have to pay for additional credits, but they do give you 15 free per month. And in exploring their terms and conditions, I don't see anything that restricts you from having multiple accounts. So if you wanna try creating a few accounts with Dolly, you might be able to get a few more generations out of it. So we're gonna put in the same prompt. We're gonna start pretty simple and we're gonna see what it gives us. Okay, so I've added a few things here because we don't have the option on Dolly to select a certain style, which means we need to include the style in our text prompt. So I'm gonna start with this, a drawing of a cute dog wearing glasses, reading a book on a white background. Let's hit the generate button and see what we get. Okay, so you can see Dolly has popped out four images here and already this is way closer to what I was looking for. And really, I believe all four of these images could be used pretty easily. You can see how it handled the white background much better. You can see how it gave us exactly what we're looking for. I, I specifically like this last one right here, this dog right here. Now, I wanna do one more generation and just tweak it a little bit and see what else it comes up with, but we're gonna save this dog right here so we can come back and maybe work with that dog a little bit more. Okay, so I just added the terms sticker art and cartoon onto the end, and this is really exactly what I'm looking for, right? Really cute dog, wearing glasses, reading a book, 
You don't see much that is like out of place or was generated wrong. I think any of these could easily be used on a t-shirt design or a print on demand product. But I wanna show you a few quick, really cool things about Dolly that really make it unique and set it apart from the other uh, gener art generators. If we click into the, to the photo that we want, we actually have a couple of options. We can download the high quality image, so then we could pop it into Canva or pop it into Photoshop, remove the background, start adding text and different things to it. But we also have a few options up here. We have edit and variations. Now, if we click on the variations button, it will actually generate multiple variations of that exact image. So let's say you got close on the first generation, but you wanted to, you, you just wanted to create a few more that might get it a little bit closer. You can use that generations button right there. And look, now I've got pretty much the same dog, but a few different styles or a few different poses that I can then pick my favorite one. Now, when we go to the edit option, we actually see a few different options and there's some really useful stuff here. So let's say with this one, I like this and I wanna use this on my print on demand product, but this tree over here is actually out of the, out of the photo. So I need to generate that part. So I can click on edit. And what I can actually do is I can actually generate more of the frame. So I can add a generation frame and go right here on the left. And if I click, it will actually generate more of that frame. So I just I can just put in here more of the drawing, something like that, hit generate, and it will actually generate the rest of the drawing. Now, if I wanted to add more items over there on the left, I could extend that and I could keep generating more to the scene, which is really cool. So as you see, it completed that little part of the image. It added some other stuff over here, but I could easily just erase that, right? Another thing I could do, let's say you got an, an image out of Dolly where something was off, something like wasn't right. You know, the AI kind of messed up, like maybe an eyeball or a hand or something just looked a little bit off. With Dolly, you can actually use the eraser tool and you can erase a portion and then you can regenerate that portion of the art. So again, if there's something you wanna fix or there's like a mistake, which happens pretty often with AI, you could easily fix that inside Dolly. So I love this tool. Now, personally, I think if you're selling with print on demand, you're wanting to use AI, I think Dolly is a really great option for pretty simple drawings and that kind of thing. But if you really wanna to go to some really high end art and you're wanting to do some complex things, my favorite, absolute favorite AI art generator is called Mid Journey. If we go over to the Mid Journey website and click on community feed, you're gonna see some of the incredible artwork that people have been generating with Mid Journey and it is absolutely breathtaking. The things that you can get out of this software are just light years ahead of anything that I've seen. And I'm gonna show you specifically how you can use it for print on demand to get really, really good stuff. Mid Journey actually works inside of Discord. So you actually set up a Discord account, you'll get into the Mid Journey Discord, and you'll over here on the left, you'll click on one of these newcomer rooms. You can use any of those rooms, then it'll take you here. Now with Mid Journey, there's a few different prompts and different options that you can put in, and I'm still learning a few of those, but it's pretty fun to play with. Now, Mid Journey does have a cost if you go above the free limit. I believe the free limit gives you like 50 or 75 generations, but then after that, you have to go to a paid plan and those start at $8 a month, which I think is really affordable. So what we'll do on Mid Journey is we're gonna put in the same prompt. What we do on, on inside Discord for Mid Journey is we put slash imagine, and that's how we have to start our prompt. And then we're gonna type in the same prompt that we've been asking the other uh, generators. So you see here, I put in the same thing, a drawing of a cute dog wearing glasses, reading a book, white background, but I added a few Mid Journey specific prompts. 8K so that it actually gives us a really high quality image. And then I also added this dash dash V4 prompt, which tells Mid Journey to use the newest version of their AI. So I always try to put that on there unless there's something specific you want from V3. But let's hit enter and let's wait for it to come up with that art. Okay, so here's what we got with Mid Journey. The way that Mid Journey works is it's gonna pop out four images and you actually have a couple of options. You see right here under the image, we have U1, U2, U3, U4, and then V1, V2, V3, V4. Now you can use the U options to upscale any image that you want to get the high quality version of. So whichever one I like the most, I could upscale it and then I could download that version. The V1, V2, V3 versions will actually let you generate four more versions of the one that you like. So you have V1, V2, V3, V4. So if I wanted to generate four more uh, versions of V2, I just click on the V2 button and it will show me four more versions. 
So if I scroll down, you see that right here, we have four versions of that same dog kind of reading a different book or a little bit different pose. And that gives me those four versions. And then from there, I can upscale the one that I want. Let's say it's number you know, two. I can just press that U2 button and it will upscale that image for me. Now you see that right here, right? This is the one I wanna go with. So I upscaled it. Now I can click open in browser and I have this really high quality image that I could easily remove the background from and then use with print on demand. But there are a couple other prompts that you can use in here. There are many prompts. I haven't even found them all, but a few other prompts specifically for print on demand that I think work really well. So here's what I got when I just put in the word sticker art. Now I think these are even better because these were, will be even easier to cut out uh, when you remove the background, right? Because we've got kind of, they kind of look like a sticker. They have this outline. So this is awesome, right? This can easily be used for print on demand. All that I need to do is upscale the one that I want, or if I want all of them, I can upscale all of them, pop those into something like Photoshop or Canva, remove the background, and then I can just add the text that I want, or I can just sell these as is. But all I need to do is just upload the design to print on demand to any product I want, and I'm ready to start selling. So I'm sure you can see how this saves a ton of time and money for print on demand sellers. We used to have to hire designers or spend hours designing ourselves, or maybe buy all little art pieces and elements from something like Etsy. And now we can create original art within seconds with these amazing AI tools. So I'm excited to hear how you are going to use AI in your print on demand business. Let me know in the comments. If you like this video today, just tap the like button, just takes one second and helps us get this content out to more people. Also consider subscribing to the channel and hitting the bell icon. That way you can get notified when new videos release. See you soon.